I'm slightly frustrated at having to make this video right now. Why? Because I filmed it already. Why didn't that work? Well, because, you see, uh, this thing happened where there was a big square on my face the entire time that I was recording, and I didn't notice until I went to edit the video. So, that was a solid half an hour of my life wasted. But nevertheless, we're gonna get through it again, and this is what we're here for. Let me just clarify before we begin, those of you that are here to get the free impulse response pack, you already know what it is, you already know what you're doing with it. Just go ahead, go into the description, download it, take it for free, it's okay, no problem, go ahead. Because you're vultures. But, having said that, you cannot, under any circumstances, come back to me on this video and comment about how terrible the impulse responses are, or how I didn't do a good job, or how they didn't sound up to your standard, because I have three disclaimers explaining exactly how this was made, and those three disclaimers are going to give you a lot more context as to what they are meant to do, and the the way that I intended for them to be used. But I'm not going to tell you when those three disclaimers are, so you're just going to have to watch the video to figure it out. Well, very quickly, what is an IR pack? Well, an impulse response is essentially a replacement for a mic on a cab for your amp in a DAW. And you're going to be using that so that you don't have to use an actual amplifier because that might make noise and you're going to be getting noise complaints and neighbors and people blah 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 whatever you can instead just take this impulse response use a vst amp or whatever you want you can go direct with your signal and you can essentially emulate a certain microphone on a certain speaker so what i did was i found this method on the urm academy video which i will also link down below next to the free impulse response pack basically what you do is you take a small sample of white noise you put it through your amplifier uh, you record that with a certain microphone and you make it one sample length long and you will now have a uh, impulse response that's how i made them so if you would like to check out that video and make your own impulse responses go ahead and check that out and you can also make a 100% totally free impulse response pack like I have. So on to the specifics. First of all, what microphones did I use? The first microphone is a Shure SM57. For those of you that are unaware, the SM57 is essentially the most popular microphone in the world. It's probably been used on nearly every single good album ever to exist. And due to that, it's probably not very experimental or original of me to be using an SM57 on these impulse responses, but it's reliable, it does the job, and I'm not really willing to pay a whole load of money for a really expensive microphone with a fancy prestigious label on it, so this is what we're getting. Alongside the Toman brand T-Bone MB55, this is actually a knockoff of an SM58 from what I gather, and the actual SM58, also made by Shure, is actually extremely similar in sound to the SM57, but it's more used for live sound than anything else. The thing is, this is a knockoff, so I'm assuming that it will have a lot more um, differences than a real 58 would from a 57. Uh, also because it's super cheap. If you actually have 35 euro spare, you can buy one of these and you'll be able to basically make an impulse response the same way I have. First disclaimer, although I do have my degree in music production and I do spend a large portion of my time dealing with music based projects and thinking about music and researching music, I am not a 100% professional, despite the fact that I did skim through the video for several seconds to find the method and I did give it at least a portion of my attention for part of that time, it's possible that I might have made a mistake along the way. Although I did use that video, I might not have done it the exact same way that the engineer described in the video. So don't come crying to me if you're saying like, oh it sounds wrong because of this. Well yeah, whatever, it's free, what are you expecting, top quality? Having said that, I'm sure based on the sounds that I've heard from the impulse responses that I did a pretty good job and if an actual professional were to do it it would sound more or less the same. So what amps did I use? For those of you who are regular users you will notice that I tend to use just the same amp over and over again and while I do own multiple amps the first one that we're going to be tackling is that one that is predominantly featured on my channel the Fender Mustang 3. The exact Celestian V12 GT whatever speaker that's in it doesn't actually mean anything to me I don't know uh, anything about the reputation of these speakers, but the fact that it's made by Celestian actually tells you that it's probably a very good build quality and that it's well worth the money. Especially considering the amplifier was about 300 euro when I bought it new, and a Celestian speaker is usually about 100 on its own, so it's a pretty good price for a 50 watt amp. One thing that I forgot to do was to level all of the EQ settings. So the EQ settings are actually set to the way I have my amp set, 
which might cause a little bit of a change in the sound. I'm not sure how drastic it will be, but it's definitely not set level the way it should have been. And I only realized this afterwards, but again, it, the impulse responses sound fine to me, so it doesn't bother me. Disclaimer number two. In the video that I have linked down in the description where I found this method for creating an impulse response, the engineer did specify to use a load box directly into a cabinet in order to get that uh, impulse response of the cabinet. I theoretically, from what I know of my amp, could have just gone straight into the effects return and that would have created the same idea by bypassing the amp section, I think, but I didn't think to do that at the time, so it went in through the front end of the amp. I don't know how much of a difference that makes, but again, that's just my disclaimer. If you're saying like any of the beast B-roll footage is like, oh, that's wrong. Well, there you go. I, I know. I know it's wrong. Just being aware of your stupidity and make it any less stupid. Also, I'm not bothered really checking to see how much of a difference it makes because it would mean I'd have to do the entire process again and I'm super lazy. And also, it doesn't really matter because the next two amps don't really have the option to go into an effects return anyway. Which leads us on to amp number two. A Squire SP10, so named because it is a 10 watt amp, and I'm assuming SP stands for shit pile. It's the first amp I ever owned, came with a Squire starter pack that included my Squire Strat. Total came to about 150 euro, I would guess. What makes this amp truly unique is that between the summer of 2007 and the winter of 2009, this amplifier was sitting in my back garden because I had quit playing guitar for that time since I was bored. So, it's very rusted and almost definitely an electrical hazard, so that's bound to get a different kind of tone out of it. Lastly, we move on to amp number three. I don't know what this amp is. Uh, it says G10 on the front of it, and I'm not sure where it came from or how it got in my house or anything. I don't even have a recollection of ever playing it. I would imagine that my parents bought it for me after I started playing guitar again, but before they bought me the Mustang 3. So what I've done with each amplifier is I have taken each microphone and I have done one recording where the microphone is facing directly in front of the amplifier head on. I've also done another recording where it's at a roughly 45 degree angle and I've done that with each microphone for each amp adding up to a total of 12 impulse responses in the pack. So now we know what our equipment and our method is, let's go on a mystical adventure into my computer. And you will see in front of you my recording software. More specifically, you are looking at a project which contains my newest single, Shame, which is actually going to be coming out on the 1st of May. Pre-save and pre-orders start on the 24th of April. So if you'd be interested at all in listening to that, then be sure to follow that link down in the description to pre-save it. I didn't actually use any of my own impulse responses on this because I didn't feel like it. I don't need to explain myself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a DI'd guitar track, meaning it's a completely direct signal from my guitar, no amp, no cap on it whatsoever. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use a free amplifier VST, which is a free, it's just a, it's, it's an amplifier in your DAW that you can use. It's made by Ignite Amps, I'll put that down in the description. And then what I'm going to do is, actually I'll really quickly explain to you, you can load the impulse responses using the Reverb plugin. Uh, I'm, I don't know if you can use other reverb plugins in other DAWs to do this same thing, but in Reaper, the reverb plugin does allow you to load impulse responses, but it doesn't really give you much options as to what you're going to do to change it after you've loaded it. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this Nadir or Nadar or Nadir plugin. The thing that you see in front of you, that's what we're using. And what we're going to do is we are going to load up every single one of the impulse responses and I'm going to give you a little bit of a taster as to what they all sound like. So I'm going to have this little section of uh, the song playing and I'm going to scroll through each one individually and you will see that the way they are labeled is based on the amp which is either the G10, the Squire or the Mustang. It's then labeled based on the microphone, the SM57 is 57 and the Thoman brand microphone is dirt because it's dirt. And then next of all we have on axis which means that it is facing the amplifier directly and then we have off axis which means it's facing the amplifier at an angle. So I'm going to load up each different one and then at the end I'm going to load up two at the same time and do some blending and see what different kinds of tones we can get and what versatility the IRs create. 
Now that you've heard all of that, let me give you the final disclaimer number three. Two of these amps are little tiny 10 watt things that have absolutely zero chance of ever giving you a high gain metal tone. The other one, which does have that possibility, was still operated by me, giving it an extremely high chance of not making out to be a very, very good impulse response when it comes to getting a very good modern metal tone. So why would I even bother releasing it then? Well the way that I want to use these in future, because this was my first time doing this, I decided having listened to it, I could use these for like an intro. I, like if it's a kind of a lo-fi thing, or if I'm doing punk or black metal, which is a lot of the kind of stuff I write is punk or black metal. If it's like a lo-fi section, if it's a section where you kind of just want your guitar to sound like it's coming through a telephone cable before a breakdown. You can use it creatively, you can do whatever you want with it. Or maybe you will use it to get a full-on guitar tone. I don't know, maybe you will. I don't know you. Or do I? And regard the, did, did I mention that they're, they're free? Huh? You can use them creatively and find some use for them, I'm sure. Or I've just wasted my time. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please do like, share, comment, subscribe, all the good stuff down there. Remember to go follow all the links and you'll be able to find a little bit more information on reamping if you didn't find my explanation thorough enough. And aside from that, have a good day, stay safe, and I'll talk to you later, yeah?